This is everything you got? Yep. My whole life. <laughs> his nickname is One. He would not give us his real name. And he's just one of many K2 users either hanging or stumbling around the epicenter of the K2 epidemic at the intersection of Manhattan's East 125th Street and Lexington Avenue. It's like dust. It's like it sends you right to the moon. The high is like going to the moon. Right? One uses the synthetic drug and sells it too. He tells us, contrary to what's been previously reported by other media outlets, K2 is now selling on the street at inflated prices, like so many other illegal drugs. That means it's no longer a simple purchase at your neighborhood bodega. Y'all took it and y'all criminalized it. Not true per se, but the media, by bringing all this attention to it, now you got the backpack on, you got that K2 15 the criminalization of K2 came full circle Wednesday as local and federal officials announced the bust of a sprawling international K2 import, distribution, and sales crime ring that involved manufacturing in China, storage units across New York City, and perfectly routine retail sales at bodegas and convenience stores. Ironically, bodegas, convenience stores, which are supposedly supposed to provide nourishment in the form of milk and bread and to the communities they supposedly serve, have effectively, over this past year, been poisoning those communities. Federal agents found thousands of bags filled with one of K2's raw ingredients, described by one agent as potpourri, in a rundown warehouse in the Bronx, advertised as an auto body shop. But a closer look reveals several high-tech night vision surveillance cameras, presumably installed to protect the product. Those leaves go from benign to potentially deadly when dealers spray them with a liquefied form of the synthetic marijuana. In fact, prosecutors say the crime ring imported enough of these raw materials to make more than a quarter of a million retail packets of K2. It's now the drug of choice among many of the city's homeless because it's cheap and thought to be legal. One tells us it's also an emotional crutch of sorts for the misery of homelessness. K2 is only a way to escape from the, the daily grind, the daily <laughs> daily struggle. That's all K2 is. Anyone who thinks K2 has taken over and that heroin is no longer a problem needs to spend a night out here. For 20 years now, this has always been a heroin place. In fact, a man overdosed on the opiate while we were covering this story. Mount Sinai Hospital's ER still sees about five to 10 heroin overdoses a week. But medical director Dr. Peter Shear says there are about 10 to 20 K2 overdoses rolling through his doors every single week. So they put a strain on the operation, but at the same time, they're, they're really in acute medical need because we know that these people do have seizures, people die, people end up in intensive care units. K2 takes its toll on the health care system and on family. They can't stand it. They all wish I'd stop this. Shit. They always tell me about this. Shit. We tried unsuccessfully for weeks to convince one's relatives on Staten Island to talk to us on camera about what they told us over the phone. They are sorely disappointed and saddened by his continued K2 abuse and his life on the street. I've been smoking K2 for five years. How am I? It's a vicious cycle. And like so many other men and women out here, one has so far been unable to escape it. Even though the feds made the bust, the sad fact is anyone who wants to score some K2 here in East Harlem will likely be able to do so. The bigger challenge is convincing someone that K2 will ultimately take them downhill. In East Harlem, Jay Dow, Pix 11 News.